The next logical step when we're talking about CSS is to start learning about something called a div, D-I-V. <clears throat> a div or a div tag actually stands for division. And it's really the way that we break our website up into to, uh, to sections. Um, think of a division or a div tag like a header, a footer. Um, if you've got two or three columns and you've got two or three divs. Anytime you've got alignment um, that needs to happen on your website, you're probably going to need a div to create that. Now, I started uh, with the HTML file that I left off with in the external CSS lecture. And, uh, and I've, I've got basically a, an HTML skeleton. I have a link to a style sheet uh, that's saved into my root folder. I've got a couple of paragraphs there that, that have uh, a, a CSS rule applied to those as well. Now, what I'd like to do first and foremost is to go ahead and put a div tag around, uh, let's do uh, around each paragraph. So I'm just going to put div. And at the end of this paragraph, even on its own line if you want, I'm going to do a closing div. I'll do the same down here on this one. I'll say div there and put the closing div tag here at the end. Now I'll save that and I want to take a look at that in my browser. And at this point, I really don't have any sort of difference. I don't see anything that looks different than, than what I've already done. Um, and that's okay. A div by, by default just is a big box that's going around everything. A div is a rectangular uh, shape. And without giving it any CSS, it doesn't have a look. It doesn't have a width or a height. It just kind of goes where it needs to go. Uh, it goes all the way across the screen. It goes as far down as it needs to. But it doesn't have a border. It doesn't have a color. It doesn't have anything until we start to give it some CSS. So I'm going to jump back to my code, and I'm going to put a CSS rule on each one of these. On this first div, I'm going to give it a class of, um, what am I going to call this? I'll say top div. Top div. Now remember, class names in CSS can't have spaces. So either put an underscore there or uh, just put top div all as one word. I'll do the same to this div down here. Uh, I'm going to give it a class name. A bottom div. And again, if I save this, look at it in a browser, I won't see any difference. The power is in the CSS. When I pull my CSS file back up, um, I'm going to have to create two new rules uh, called top div and bottom div. Now, I'm just going to bump these, uh, the, the two paragraph styles down that we did earlier, and I'm going to put dot top div. I'll go ahead and create a dot bottom div. And I'll give these very similar properties. Um, just like we learned font family, font size, and color before, we can also, uh, th there's a, a bunch of other properties that you can put on your divs. Now, one that I want to try first is width, and I'm going to put uh, 500px for pixels. Now, a width, you can actually drop in either as a pixel or a percentage. Uh, you can't have inches. Inches are just for print. But you can do pixels or a percentage of your screen. I'm going to stick with pixels for now. Uh, percentages get a little, little difficult, so we're going to learn pixels first. This one I'll drop in at 300 pixels. 500px semicolon and 300px semicolon. I'll save that. I'll go back to my HTML file and refresh it. Get rid of some of these other tabs here. And when I refresh that, it looks different. It doesn't go all the way across the screen anymore. It cuts off right here. And that's about 500 pixels, I would assume, from this point. So a div can have CSS properties like width that will limit it to a certain width. My bottom column also uh, got different. My bottom div, it looks more like a column now. Now I've got about 300 pixels over, and this thing stops, and it, gets, it got taller, however. That paragraph wasn't this tall before because it didn't need to be that tall. But with that, it at least gives me uh, some idea that, that this is only going over to there. Um, let's drop in a background color on both of these. 
I'm going to say background dash color. And we'll drop in uh, some grays. Uh, anytime that you're dealing with a color number, if you do three of the same uh, number or letter, it's going to be some shade of gray. So I'll say 333. Three, three. And down here, background color. And we'll do a higher number this time. Let's do uh, BBB. So we'll see which one's light, which one's dark. Go back to my browser. 333 three, three is very dark. Uh, I can see that it's almost black, actually. And uh, that tells me that 000, zero, zero is going to be black. And FFF, the highest color number, is going to be white. Uh, BBB being closer to the FFF, the, the maximum value, and that's a very light gray. So not only can I see from the width that this div is, uh, is, has a width of, of this, but I can see from the background color as well. Uh, I can also tell, and it's very dark here, but I can tell that the div is exactly the same width as, uh, or it will fill up the, the entire width with text. The L in lorem is pretty much right on the edge here, and the word A is pretty much right on the edge there. There's no padding or margin or space around this. We'll have to build that in with CSS later as well. So in quick summary, before we move on to something else, a div is a rectangular area that you can put stuff in. You can put text inside of a div. Uh, you can put paragraphs. You can put other tags. You can put other divs inside of a, a div. Um, as well as images and video and, and anything else that's going to go on your website. Divs are really how we come up with our layouts overall. Let's try one more uh, property here and then we'll conclude this session. Uh, the next property I want to put in is something called float. And I'm going to put left and on this one I'll put right. Float left, float right. Uh, this is essentially how we do alignment with divs. The word float is kind of confusing because it seems like we should just say align left or align right. Uh, but when we do this, we can actually see that the things start to align up here. Let me shrink my browser down so it fits within our, our viewing area here. Um, but this first div aligns to the left. And when we say float left, what we're essentially saying is we want this to float next to the next thing. So whatever comes after this, uh, this div number one, it's gonna. This is gonna be to the left of that. We're floating from sort of the bottom up. We're floating next to it to the left. This one we actually say float right. So what we're doing is we're floating to the right of of the next item or the previous item as well. So in this case, we have something that's on the left and something that's on the right. Now, if I were to make my browser screen really wide, it's, I know it's going out of your viewing area, but you can see what's happening it's leaving this great big gap in between there. So that's another problem we'll have to solve on an, another session. But for right now, we can at least uh, see how this works. Uh, even if things don't fit with the width, it still aligns this to the left edge of the screen and this to the right. So if you can't fit side by side with that given width, it'll bump it down to the next line. But you can see how we're starting to get layouts going here. Starting to get layouts. One more thing with the code, if I don't put a float at all on this bottom div, take the float off completely, what do you think is going to happen here? Looks like nothing at all. So we do need those floats on both. Okay, We do need floats on just about every div we put in. Now if I put in a float left on this one, and check that out in our browser, it does apply it uh, to the the next, basically the next column over. Uh, it aligns it to the left as far as it can go over without overlapping something else. So float left on this div, float left on this div gives more space to its right. Um, if I extend my browser window, nothing happens here. Okay, it's going to stick there to the left. So a lot of designs start from the left edge and just sort of align things, float left, float left, float left, so it stacks side by side by side. Um, so in quick summary here, we've learned a, a div tag, a brand new HTML tag. A div is nothing but a rectangle that goes around things. It contains things. 
But uh, the power with, with divs really lies in the CSS you put with it. We learned a few new CSS properties including width, background color, and float. You might be wondering if there's a height that goes along with this. The answer is yes, but you don't use height very often uh, because your content is going to dictate the height. The div will expand as far as it needs to go as long as there's no height constraining it. Um, so oftentimes we'll leave the height off. But um, So that's kind of where we're at with, with the div tag and CSS. We'll continue on uh, by putting nested divs or divs inside of divs with the next lesson. But for right now, uh, a div, a big rectangle, you can apply CSS to, and here's uh, three CSS properties where we can actually see what the div's doing.